everything with this. <gasps> I'm remembering everything now. Oh Took my god. Living, yeah. <sighs> In no time you can reach 10 centimeters from 7. But what is happening here is like my cervix is closing back again. Both my legs are like this. Like this. Yeah. I am not dressed. So started just shedding tears, you know. Oh. No, it was not easy, you know. Do you realize the last time you were here? Hmm? It's like two years ago. We we're talking about <laughs> we How were doing I met the... you. <laughs> Imagine the boyfriend turn. Mm, I see you at the way right now. See there now. Guy, <laughs> this boy, this boy. Hi. <laughs> if this camera falls down, guys. The boy is responsible. Mm. My one and only Mr. Mm, that name, you know that name, Papa? Mr. what? Mm. Don't do that. Don't, <laughs> don't call him that. Yeah? Oh, well, Mr. Waring. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Martha. In case this is your first time on this channel, I do videos on beauty, um. lifestyle, and nowadays a bit of motherhood here and there. And today we have a special guest again for the returning subscribers. Here he is again. It's been a while since we had him on the channel. Welcome. Thank you. It's been a minute. Yes, it has. So, yeah, we really have his presence, but when we do, we are grateful. Thank you for gracing my channel thank, today. Thank, thank you for the invite to my channel. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, guys. Uh, you have been requesting this video for the longest time uh, since it actually happened and I think we, I mean, I feel ready. Do you feel ready to talk about this? Yeah. Yeah. So we've been postponing this video for so long but today we decided to do it. Yes, we're talking about how we gave birth to you. <laughs> so this is the birth story guys. So. <clears throat> Initially, I actually wanted to uh, vlog the video. He was like, uh, no, he was like a bit more reserved uh, with that idea. Like he wasn't like really into it. And um, yeah, he actually won because the situation did not really allow for us to vlog because you, some, sometimes you can't really plan. You know, you can't plan the birth, but however it happens, Nobody knows until it happens, yeah? It, so, I started feeling... Ba um, the night before. The, two days before, mm -hmm. two nights before actually. I started feeling pain, contraction pains, on the exact date that I was supposed to give birth. Uh, but nothing was happening. Actually, a few days before, I had started taking ac ac acupuncture. Do you call it acupuncture? Acupuncture. <laughs> that um, was going to help induce labor to start. But until the day of um, that I was supposed to give birth, I was not feeling anything. Uh, but then the night of my planned birth date, I started feeling something. I didn't even sleep that night. I remember I spent the night actually on this couch, and you were on your, uh, on your and you were in bed. Mm -hmm. I was very uneasy, uncomfortable, and I was feeling pain every. Uh, like, to be honest, it was. You, you, always, you always had these long nights when you used to sleep early. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was supposed to go to work the next day, I think so. Yes, you were supposed to go to work. Of course, you had to sleep. I was not feeling... I, I really watched Netflix all night. I was feeling pain, but it was like pain that was coming and then going. It was painful sometimes, but not, of course not painful enough. Actually, I exceeded the date of birth by three days, right? Like, because it was 40 plus three days. Mm -hmm. So he came actually on the third day from the birth date. Yeah, so exactly on the date of birth is when I started feeling contractions. I didn't sleep at night because of the pain. So I just spent the night the night on the couch watching, watching Netflix. And yeah, it was uncomfortable. And then I actually downloaded the app. There's an app that you can download. And that is what I actually did. Do I even still have it? yes <laughs> i still have it this one right here so that is the app that i downloaded to document my contractions i still have 
I still <laughs> have the contractions here from the last day. Yeah. So I started documenting the constra the contractions, but they, they were um, they, they were regular but not strong enough. And from my experience, uh, um, the first time that I gave birth to Jazzy, I knew that those tr contractions are not strong enough to be actually opening my cervix. So I was just like, before I go to the hospital and they send me back home, I'm just going to chill and then I'm going to wait for tomorrow and then see what happens during the day. So that night went like that and then the day after, yes, I was feeling the constructions during the day, but they were, they were not worrying me at all. Then evening came again. I don't know. Well, I don't know what happens, but it's like the contractions wait for evening to come for you to now start feeling them strongly I don't know, but then I started feeling them again and this time they were even stronger uh, To a point that I was like eh, we have to make sure these are not the real contractions and how we decided to do that is to I got in the bathtub I think, you, did, you, you came to wake me up in the night. It was night. What time was it? Whoa. Yeah, I was, was going to at night, you know I was again on the couch because I don't want to disturb him. I can't find a position to sleep. I'm just like, oh, I can't sleep anyway. Let me leave him sleep. So I was like spending a lot of time on the couch anyway. Uh, I guess that time you're also very, very nervous. That thing is very loud. Yeah, as in when the date of birth is nearing, you're also very um, nervous. You're just, you're really nervous and you're not at peace because you don't you never don't know when it's going to come and how it's going to be mm -hmm. so you're quite restless and that was how i was so i felt the pain so much and I, so i went to wake you up yeah. i told him I, I feel so much pain and maybe we should uh you know uh put, place a bath but okay, some water and but and so it, it uh, increases the contraction right yeah if the construct if the contractions are real then they would become much more stronger, stronger in the bathtub and if they're not real then they would actually subside and that is what happened after the bath they just chilled and i was actually able to sleep then that morning i remember that morning i actually have a picture of jazzy she she, she before she went we took you took her to kindergarten yeah, yeah. i remember she kissed the the belly you know to say yeah hi and bye to the baby and um that was a busy morning you also had this guy from the yeah how do you call it? yeah i don't yeah. know there was a guy actually coming to repair something in the kitchen that day so when he went to take jazzy to kindergarten he actually came by i could like hardly walk because i was like walking a few steps and feeling pain yeah. walking a few steps and then feeling pain even when he was like talking to me in the kitchen i remember i was like sitting down he was like are you almost due he understood because he has a child also um and then i told him actually yeah I'm actually due so if anything happens here yeah but but you actually came in yeah. right before um, the guy left so what I did is that because the pain was now becoming more regular I called my gyna so calling there the one of the assistants told me what well, I told them I have been feeling pain now for the last two nights but the last night was much more strong or rather it was uh, they were regular until I went to the bathtub and then after the bathtub they were over and then in the morning they came back now regular So I told them now they've, be, they've, they've been coming every like five minutes sometimes three minutes You know actually I was now calling to tell her if I should come by and uh, for them to check if the cervix is open rather than for me to go to the hospital and They send me back home because actually the hospital told me uh i should wait like after my date of birth if the baby has not yet come a week later say 40 plus five days then i should act then i should go to the hospital but before that i should stay going to the guy now the, the assistant told me yeah i don't think it's a good idea to come to the to the clinic to the clinic yeah. to the office, the office and, yeah, practice right because if anything happens here we do not have the facility or the 
you know the capability to actually care for you if the baby decides to come while I'm there so she told me I should go to the hospital the hospital where I have um, registered to give birth yeah we kind of like chilled guys the first time we gave I gave birth we went to the hospital five times this they were sending us back five times so this time we were like uh -uh, we are not in the mood for and that and the drive was like more than half an hour of drive. it was far we were living far from the yeah. hospital at least this time round we were living like 10 minutes 10, away 10 minutes yeah 10 15 minutes yeah. so we decided to actually now go to the hospital i had already packed the bag you guys know that you watched that video of me packing the bag in case you haven't i'm going to link everything down in the description bar so i had packed the bags jay you had also packed your bag it looks really just got some stuff i kept telling no, you no 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 i packed the bag as well when Toh. yeah I, I had a bag in time no <laughs> in time the, remember. the last minute you know like always <laughs> but i was packed I was ready to go all right so we took the stuff to the car i think mine were already in the car yeah you took them in the car yeah. that morning yeah so we what we decided to do actually is go shopping no for a coffee date we went for a coffee date yeah. Because you know, you, you thought that maybe you're already so. If you go to the, to the clinic, they're gonna send you back. So, you said right. that, you know, should, let's pass time, you let's try walk. To, you're gonna do lots of walks so that maybe she can push, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so we went for a walk in the mall, you know, yeah. so that's a kind of branch, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did have a yeah, it was actually breakfast, it was like 9 10 in the morning. Yeah, 10 in the morning, yeah. We had coffee and um, I was at the place, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I actually can remember some of the guests at that um, ca place, that cafe, were looking at us. There was there was a couple looking at us. I think maybe they were, they were noticing me being uncomfortable because obviously the pain kept coming, guys. The pain was still coming. I walk a few steps and then I have to stop because I'm feeling that pain. The contraction was coming, so I had to wait for it to to go again. Yeah. So from there, we now headed to the hospital, but before that we met with a friend who was actually very significant in this time. Um, you know, with the lockdown, it was not easy to find someone who would actually care for Jazzy. My family, my host family, uh, when I was an au pair, they had offered to take her, but around this time, then they fell ill. <laughs> they fell ill like a week or two before, and you know with this corona nobody's sure about anything so we had to change plans she could not go there anymore a friend of ours had to take her so we met her on the way to the hospital to give her jazzy's stuff jazzy's back because she was supposed to go pick her up and um and of course take her with her to, to her home right so we met with her and now went to the hospital i think we arrived at the hospital around 12. Yeah. Mm, obviously you have to register down there when you enter the hospital because well again covid you have to stay why you, where you're coming in yeah. if you have an appointment all of that so actually before i went to the hospital yeah. i called yeah. first because obviously they would say no we said you should yeah. come at 40 plus five yeah. days to the hospital but now it's like just 40 plus three days you should go to your guy now but i called them earlier and told them no i have uh, cons constructions now and i've called my guy now the guy now has said that i should actually now come to the clinic yeah so that appointment was confirmed so that is what i told the clerk down at the um at the entrance we have an appointment it's allowed i'm supposed to come in so they didn't have a problem with now jay coming in because otherwise Probably he would not have been allowed to enter with us, yeah. to enter with me. So we got there, we got to the hospital, we entered, they were expecting us. So they gave me a room and they placed me on the CTG, which is a labor recorder. You can call it labor recorder, I think. Vian Shriver. It's because the, the amount, the, the strength of the vein, what call it, the construction, yeah. and also takes the heartbeat of the child, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm, exactly. We found a very nice uh, oh, midwife, yeah. an elderly one. Was she an elderly? She was she, a young girl. No, the first one was elderly. 
before they changed sh shifts. Can you You can't remember? The first time we, we went there, the, the there one, was an old one. Yeah, yeah there was Very an older one. There. Yeah. Placed me on the city gate, and then she left the room. Then I was left there with Jay. Uh, I think how long? I think I stayed for half an hour on there, or maybe half an hour or twenty minutes. Then she came back. Yeah, she t she she checked the city gate, and then she was like, "Huh, well, not yet there." And she also obviously checked my cervix, mm -hmm. and she says, "You're just three centimeters open." I was like, hmm, "Here goes again." the story from the first time yeah because i also took very very long to uh to get to the 10 centimeters that is actually required to give birth normally you get uh, you have to be 20, 10 min 10 centimeters open for the baby to come out and i i was like two centimeters still so i had to go through way much more pain to get to the you know required uh, 10 centimeters so she said um, actually at this point there's no reason for me to take you in um, maybe we can try with you going for a walk for an hour then you come back at around one and then we can see if there's been any progress remember we walked throughout the through the mall that morning going to the cafe um, so we decided before they send us back home let us just um, well take that one hour walk so we went outside I called my mom because right right I was like freaking out you know I've started now stressing out I called my mom then she prayed for me and um, she encouraged me and then we went for the walk still feeling that pain every few steps every few minutes the pain comes but it's a pain that comes um, hey. You know, it goes to a peak but goes down very fast. That kind of pain would not help you open the cervix, guys. No. The pain has to be a bit longer. That pain has to like be a little bit stronger. Otherwise, it's going to be like opening your cervix and closing it back again. So the, And that was my case anyway. We walked and then, um, then at 1 o'clock we went back in. That is when we found the younger midwife who yeah. was also very, very nice. So we came back after the one, one hour. You had to sit down, or had to lie down on the city gear again. Yes, then yeah. she put me back on the city gear, yeah. um, and um, mm. and a younger midwife because they've not they, they've now changed shifts. Um, I stayed there for also like about fifteen to twenty minutes there about. Then um, when she, I think when she came to take off the city gear. Yeah, they they took up uh, I think uh, some blood. Yeah, yeah. Before they they took off my my the bands and everything for to take away the city gist scan stuff, uh, the doctor came and they um, took my blood samples. Then the midwife came to take off the stuff and check how the city gear went. My water broke. I was as I was still lying on that um, stretch. It's a stretch. Is what it was not. It wasn't even a bed yet. It was on the stretcher. My water broke. And it, it actually made me really freak out because it was not normal. The water was completely green. Yeah. Guys, this is where everything started. This is where <laughs> all the drama and wahala started. The water was completely green and that is not normal because the water is supposed to be colorless. Yeah. Um, well, more or less colorless. So when the water is green, it means the baby has been in stress. You can't tell how long the baby has been in stress. But the good thing is that the, from the city, you can tell the heartbeat mm. of the child is normal. Nothing has yet ha has happened yet. The baby is still fine. Yeah. Well, rel fine is relative at this point, but fine. So with the water breaking it means they're not going to send me home mm. they're not officially taking me in as their patient and so now i was taken to the labor room officially yeah. whew, whew. i can't deal with this <gasps> i'm remembering everything now you oh my the labor god room, yeah. <sighs> hmm? then we'll play some music oh my god some nice you had downloaded music. No, no, no. I had that music on my phone, you know. I don't, but you had you had saved it. No, just look for it. On my, 
April music. Oh, really? Yeah, that was, yeah. But that was really nice. He had some really calming gospel music. Gospel music yeah. <laughs> He usually does not listen to this kind of music, but that day... I put it for, for, for the that purpose. You know, for that purpose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> usually when I feel pain, by the way, guys, I don't know about you, but when I'm feeling so much pain, I go on silent mm -hmm. mode. I, I'm, sil I'm in my zone. I just don't want to talk. I, I can't. Like, when you start talking to me, you can actually get a really rude answer. So... <laughs> Um, I deal with my pain in silence. I'm not even the screaming type. So I, yeah, the contractions kept coming. Uh, the cervix kept being checked every every now and then. At some point, she said I'm um, three centimeters open. Um, that was like after like an hour or two. Then after another, um, let's say at around three there, three p.m. is when like she's saying that it's uh, i'm three centimeters open this whole time i'm feeling oh my god the pain oh my goodness oh the pain is unbearable at this point guys i have not even taken anything anything for pain anything at all so i'm actually going through all these labors labor pains purely like with not even paracetamol nothing how are you feeling by the way yeah, worried. See, seeing me there. Worried. Why? Why? Mm-hmm. Because it's kind of a worried situation, you know. It's a matter of life and death, you know, to be honest. You're so scared somebody would die? It's not, it's not a small thing. Not that someone could die. Yeah. But you don't know the outcome of whatever is happening at the moment. Mm. You just yeah. hope and pray that everything goes well, goes on, and goes, goes well, you know. Yeah. And, and, and okay, there's, they reached a time that I had to get some coffee, right, from downstairs because I was yeah, tired. Yeah, you're very tired. Yeah, we, we, only, we only had that breakfast. True, by the way, we, we hadn't eat eaten. Anything, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, I need to go take coffee, but I can't leave you alone. You know, I was kind of. Mm -hmm. yeah. The midwife offered that you can you can go. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. She's going to stay, but she, she was very very kind. Honestly very, speaking, very nice. she was so kind. I've not had any bad experience with midwives at this particular hospital yeah. so you went and uh, did you go to pick coffee you actually were hesitant you didn't want to leave but then you were tired you needed something to yes, back yeah. up your strength yeah. I, I went to pick up coffee also I, went, I had to pick, pick up a bag yeah because you, coming up there mm, we never had any bag you know? I, ne I never took the bags because yeah. you never know if they're going to send you back or yeah. not so we went up without the bags mm -hmm. so when they officially now took us to the labor room yeah. we knew we are staying so he went and picked my bag I also needed my 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 sweets because my mouth was dry my lips were dry um i just needed my things yeah at around um like two hours later i'm still in pain guys and i'm um by then i was around five five centimeters open which is not so bad because we are heading in the right direction but uh as of uh, and the baby was now starting to get stressed because it's been a while now remember the baby came out with green water stressed uh the city gate is also now not stable anymore it's going up and going down yeah. it's, oof, so worry started coming in guys I, i'm so much in pain i'm getting tired um i haven't yet asked for any pain med uh, at, at some point the midwife was like uh we cannot continue doing this because the the more we stress you like me the more i get stressed the more the baby is also getting stressed the situation is actually becoming more serious so she offered to actually what do you call it pdr a spinal what do you call to, pdr to to to, to stop or the to, pain, rebu yeah. to reduce the pain but you know it was something which, which you never wanted to do you know no because you're some kind of somehow skeptical about it because of the side effects of the PDR. It's a peridural anesthesia, yeah. So, whew. actually, I said no because I, um, yeah, as much as possible, I would have um, preferred to have a natural bath. So, what I asked her to do is actually give me the oxytocin. So, I actually asked her, aha, uh -huh, it's called getting induced. So, um, I actually asked her, what if we actually induce, you know, I was. Before I get the PDR, 
I was I was ready to be induced guys in induction is the worst is it's whoa it's the worst pain that you can actually experience during birth induction is so painful if labor pain is painful then count like two times or three times more pain than that so I was actually even ready to get that before I get something I don't know why I'm scared um, of PDR because I feel like um, well if something is done the wrong way you could actually get paralyzed you know if the doctor doesn't uh, you know get the right spot get the right spot yeah. while injecting it you might actually lose some well i don't want didn't want to think about that so i told her just induce me guys so induction is when you actually get um uh, oxytocin mostly as an infusion because what oxytocin does it contracts your uterus um you know making the the labor process progress faster and the pain is extreme she told me now if i add that much pain to you and that much stress the baby again is going to suffer from that so that was for her it was out of question which was really not so good news for me but i had to accept it so she said the only option we have here actually is um, is PDR, you know, because now we have to now slow things down um, because to, to stabilize the baby. That's for you to, 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 regain, uh, to retain your energy. You know, because yeah, you're because and, and I'm almost tired and yeah, that would actually also stop the labor process. Guys, at some point she told me I'm seven centimeters but then um everything is kind of like closing back down seven centimeters to eight ten centimeters is not so much that you can actually reach within minutes even or you know in no time you can reach 10 centimeters from seven but what is happening here is like my cervix is closing back again i have never ever 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 heard about such a phenomenon before that you're actually open up to a certain level and then you start to close back back again that was the craziest thing ever my my heart sank my hope also everything was just going south hmm no 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 oh god but you did well, you know, then reached a time that they had to put the overarts, right? Yeah. The doctor who had actually taken my my blood sample before came came again. You know, they talked with the midwife, you know, how the situation is, how it is progressing. Um, then, the, then she had to also call the senior doctor. The senior doctor came and checked the situation. Uh, well continued with the labor process for a while until now they said the baby is not doing very well and the fact that your cervix is also contracting back again and they've tried to they tried to give me some medicine crown flus and the medicamente what's about us ask about medicamente well they said that it makes the mood the mood to become soft Spasmolytica, yeah, they gave me sp uh, spasmolytica because uh, it could probably be as a result of spas spasm. Oh my God, English spasm that my my muscles are contracting or the cervix is contract contrasting. Uh, they gave me some of that. It was not working. Muscle relaxant. Yeah. Yeah, so they gave me uh, muscle relaxant, which di also did not work. I mean, the doctor came and told me they have tried their best for me to give birth the natural way that like I want. They also wanted me f from so much that I actually get that kind of birth that I wished for. But the things things are not looking good, and I they, we we are going to be forced to opt for a CS. Hey. Whoa. You should have seen me guys you should have seen me fight this yes with everything i could everything i had i told them i can do this i can do this can we just try but then um looking at the the city gear of the baby city gear the heartbeat of the baby it was not doing well 
they even actually left me some few mi more minutes but they told me uh when, when it comes back yeah then, then it's the final decision of course yeah you know, if i don't decide then i would have they would force me to it's a it's for it was kind of a not uh what could not situation in my emergency you know it's it was not good for the baby, so if they never, ever, they never did a CS, mm -hmm. it could maybe have been that. Uh, not uh, an emergency CS. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he said it's either I actually decide then for the surgery. No, 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 I remember what he said. Mm -hmm. He said that, you know, it's either if you decide right now, mm -hmm. then you can have the CS while you are still awake. Awake, exactly. And if, if, if you say that you don't want to listen to you don't decide right now, mm -hmm. after 10 minutes, Maybe it can it can be that you know you you have the CS while you are not yeah, yeah emergency CS experience. I would have to That's get right. the full anesthesia but uh, you know when I if I decide in time then they would have enough time to prepare mm -hmm. and then they would just uh, you know give me the half anesthesia meaning I would be awake and I would well kind of experience kind of the feeling you know right. Yeah. I would see the baby after the baby. Even the, hate when when it comes out crying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I was taken to the theater, guys. I was heartbroken, to be honest. Everybody was trying to calm me down. Um, Talk about the theater. One second. We were only like three of us in that room. Oh my god. With gosh. the heaven, uh, with the oh midwife. Then came the senior doctor and the other doctor. And when the CS came. The time they say they will make a series, they just came people from all over, you know. Oh my God! The room was filled with people, guys. Yeah. It's not such a huge room. I was just there with my midwife, the doctor, and maybe an, a nurse or something like three people oh. in the room plus him. And then now with the theater, everybody was there. Like whoa, the room was filled with like ten people, guys. Yeah. Ten people. Some and I'm here, say. right? Yeah. I'm laying down on that. A theater bench or whatever you call it that theater bed my legs both my legs are like this like this yeah I am not dressed from like I actually had this, uh, this dress I wore this dress specifically for this uh, I had this dress on so the dress has already been pulled up to my waist the whole time actually even when I was in the labor room uh, at that point nobody even cares about if you're naked or not my legs are like this you know they're preparing me to for surgery and this is how i look 10 people coming in you know dressing up guys this is the corona period time and nobody was dressed in any kind of special way by this time nobody has tested us for corona nothing but it was kind of unsettling with how many people actually enter the theater room while you're there panicking if you're going to come out of this uh you know in in one piece how what's gonna happen to your baby and people are just streaming in through the room just like that how did you feel about that i don't know like i said i was worried <laughs> the whole time you were I just was, worried i was worried to even think about corona actually nobody thought about corona. i didn't no. even think about you know, corona you know, at that time my, my thought was now yeah like they say the first child is hard to get born the first one but second one is like they, they just slide out. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, you know, okay, maybe this one also. We are, we are going inside at 12, by 4 we'll be done. My friend, <laughs> my friend. Yeah, it was not easy, you know. But who is God? True, yeah. my God. Who is God? God was there for us. God was there with us all the time. Yes. Yeah. Because He only have us. <sighs> you know? And I thank, I thank that friend of, of ours. Mm. Who took up who took up Jazzy. our chance? For real. Was, who was supposed to pick her up? Who? Yeah. We were still there at the hospital, yeah. struggling here with uh, st stories of CS and everything, yeah. guys. I personally, you know what? I, I always thought people who decide to have CS, it's kind of funny because who would want to be stripped open? Like, <laughs> you know, but those people, the pain, hallelujah, the but pain. It took less than five minutes. The, 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 it took some time because the anesthesia, the anesthesia has to come. They have to check if but I'm the, feeling the, any kind of the, pain. They already went once we went that crisis. To, that, to, that, the, to the theater, they yeah. came in quite fast, yes, yeah. but they have to now inject me the painkiller and check if I'm actually, uh, it has started to work, you know. The anesthesia was, like I said, 
in your head. Yeah. And the doctors on the, on the feet. Right. But they all work together. That, 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 you know, that, you know, for me, I just want to be very, very fascinating, you know. Mm -hmm. you know, there are two different uh, departments of medicine. Mm -hmm. But one did list the other one. If this is the anesthesia, you know, makes a mistake. Oh my God. And, 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 and the, the kind of, you know, the medicine which makes you to, to feel kind of numb, mm -hmm. it's kind of in low doses, mm -hmm. the doctor cannot operate, you know. Yeah. And vice versa, you know. True. Yeah. Yeah, so the op the operated the thing is guys you don't feel pain cs yeah while well, they're, they're cutting you off uh, the, you know that the cs is happening you feel that how you don't feel the knife i didn't feel the knife personally but do you know what i felt though is them when they were like re, like pulling my skin apart they just cut a small space and then they pull it you know so skin like four centimeters right I don't, I don't know how many centimeters. No, 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 not that you know, like you have a big, big, <coughs> big scar. Uh, big scar. And they they no longer do that. They just cut a small space, and yeah. then because the skin is elastic anyway, oh. they now pull yeah. to create space enough to take the baby out. I felt that, and it was so disgusting. Oh, they took the baby out. I didn't. The baby didn't cry when he came out, and I was very worried. <laughs> So I was like, uh, they were taking the baby to the other room. I told you, you definitely have to follow them. Don't just stand there, follow them. I want to know where they're taking my baby. So I think you were allowed to go there with them, right? Of course, yeah. Me, I went to the, the room and saw the baby, you know. He was quite okay, but quite calm. They took some blood samples, like to want to know the amount of sugar he has. Mm -hmm. You know, and also to know if... if, if just if, if, the fast tests. Yeah, the fast tests, yeah. And, yeah. then, and then they asked me if I want to hold him. I said, No, take the baby first to the, to the, to the mom, you know. Oh, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Kaimi, so, I was so worried when they took the baby and the baby is not crying. Remember, he, he, started his, crying. he started crying. He started crying when I was in that room. But before he started crying, guys, I was, I was so, I was panicking because why is the baby so quiet? So he was already not feeling well the whole time. Um, but this, this child is really a fighter. If I tell you how many hours he was actually fighting, to you know to keep his heartbeat going he really he fought he definitely fought and and he was also fighting you know to go through my cervix which was not opening for whatever reason yeah. he is such a fighter this for me this boy is like really strong for me because he underwent both birth uh, types <laughs> he, he, he actually tried both like they say that that cs kids are not they did not fight fight that first battle of you know passing through the bath canal canal but for me he, he actually went through both because he fought to to be born naturally uh, and then he had to also undergo through cs so for me he is he's a he's a strong child honestly he, he was brought to me Ja, er schwankt noch so ein bisschen mit der Sättigung. Also wir müssen ihn schon noch ein bisschen ähm, im Blick haben, aber ich glaube, es tut ihm gut, wenn er jetzt bei Ihnen ist. Und schauen Sie, wie aktiv er ist, wie er guckt. And they said he he's he's feeling good now. I was so happy. Oh my let, god! Let, 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 let me tell you how it was for me uh, when I went to see him that room. Tell me. Yeah. So my boy landed on that kind of baby bed. You know, the doctors are all over him. This kind of kinder kinder uh, kids doctors. You know. Mm -hmm. Then they do the test. They just they get out to me. I, I can I can talk to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So his hair full full full, full hair. head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I started just shedding tears. You know. Oh. And I, I just went to his to his ears. Mm -hmm. Spoke to him, and I said a prayer. Oh. I called the adult for him. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Said a prayer to him. And they asked me, oh, "You can carry him." I said, "No, no, I don't want to carry him." Then let the mother the mother 
that uh, the whole uh, baby fast, you know, because yeah. Yeah. You're, 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 you're the person, you know, mm -hmm. who you already had like, this contact, uh, connection with him. You know, stomach and TV came out. So it's, it's kind of not correct for me to hold him fast before you. It would have been okay, you're still no, the daddy. No, 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 I'm the daddy, but you know, normally it's supposed to be like the mama should hold the child first, mm -hmm. get the first wound from the mama. You know. Did you cut the cord? I did that as well. Uh -huh. That's why, well. yeah. What did I do with my placenta? They usually keep it and they sell it too. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, 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 I remember the, our, our teacher told us, you know, mm -hmm. they make nice makeup stuff with the placenta, yeah? you know that? Yeah. They do that. They, um, it, it can also actually be used to take um, some Stammzellen, Stammzellen? That's all. But they make business with it. That's, uh, let me just put it so uh, this, <laughs> plain and they make direct. With it. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, they brought the baby to me as they were stitching me up. Actually, I started feeling pain while they were stitching me up, and then the anesthesia was like, "Are you feeling pain?" And I was like, "Yes, I can feel it." Uh, then he asked me if I can tolerate it until they're done. I told him, no, I am not going to accept. I am not going to tolerate that pain. I need that pain medicine now. He should really add more because I can't. No, I was feeling every stitch. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. I said no. And then he added me more painkiller. After that, I was taken now to a normal room. I was by myself then. This boy struggled since... Eh, all the way from okay we can say from two days before yeah because the labor had already begun but now since we went entered the hospital it was like around six to seven hours before he came yeah with all those ohalas and struggles i have to say that it it is easier for me to, to, to narrate this story right now than it would have been directly after but i think if i narrated this story directly after giving birth I would just cry throughout the video it definitely helped for me to heal a little bit for me to be able to tell it uh, but I definitely still do feel emotional every now and then when I remember you know the the struggle the struggle we went through while having him you can plan a bath all you want but how it happens only God knows to be honest like uh, how what people say that the second time birth is easier it's not always the case it might even be more horrific than the first one which was my case to be honest because jazzy's own i it was a natural birth actually with no pdr guys by the way by the way the pdr when they gave me that pdr finally i have never felt so blissful ever 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 the pain just went and I was not even feeling those contractions anymore. And I asked myself, why have I been acting a hero all this time if I can have Maybe this? because you're misinformed. What? You're misinformed, you know? Misinformed, but also the fear. The fear I of some... Yeah, but it can happen, honey. I understand. I get it you. can happen, I get you. you know? But hey, I felt so good when I, fe I was not feeling the contractions. I was just feeling some... Yes, I was feeling them coming but not the pain, not feeling the pain. It was so, I could even fall asleep. I finally could fall asleep. Oh God. But, but you're really done after that, you know? Yeah, you're really man. Done. I was so tired. But you were panicking a lot though, throughout, <laughs> throughout the bath. To, you were to, very quiet. I, I was just calm. You know, like trying said, to comfort me and stuff. It, it doesn't help you, yeah. nor does it help you to panic. You know, mostly, Sometimes, but you were scared as sometimes hell. I was trying I was trying to text some people, you know. Like, Which people are you texting while I'm giving I birth? just had to inform your people, my people, that everything is okay. They just have to pray for us. Yeah. yeah? And and also remember that we left just with one of our friends. Well then that was Yeah, so I have to, to try to find out how Jasmine is she's doing. doing. If she's missing us. Exactly. And the same night I stayed until maybe around yeah. one or, or twelve, oh. almost one. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I was so excited after that. Yeah, you actually left at midnight or later, and you yeah. had to take Jazzy to kindergarten, I think. Which I did. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, did you come the next morning? I came the next day with some kind of oops. afternoon. Afternoon. No, yeah. around twelve or one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, now when they took us to the normal room, 
uh, I could be able to breastfeed him which was so good honestly it was like so good I could like have the baby the baby was not dressed I, it was just covered with the towel so we could uh, do the um, the skin to skin uh, bonding then breastfeed him that is when they came to also take my corona test did they take your corona test no they didn't uh, not really. okay so um, that is what happened actually they came to because I was not even allowed to sleep there like the first yeah no it back. was not allowed actually yeah. mm -hmm. what did right. I have a bug hmm? what did I have a bug for in case maybe you know things happen during during birth maybe I can be Never. feeling maybe I can I can have a labor pain that makes me I don't know throw yeah, up all on you, I get you, I get you. or maybe I my water breaks on you Anything can happen. That's yeah. why you need a change of clothes. <laughs> yeah, but of course, also if you're spending time at the hospital, then you're going to need a change of clothes and stuff. I, I heard also some snacks in that bag, which I never ate. <laughs> yeah, that was that, guys. That was my bath story, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I would like to know how your experience was if you are a mom um, if you are uh, yet to become mommy I am wishing you I am wishing you all the best I am praying for your birth to be a very beautiful story for you and um, for you to be safe and your baby so I'm going to catch you guys on my next video bye bye bye